Hello everyone, this is Dr. Manpreet Kurana and today we are going to read the classification of antibiotics based on the mechanism of action. This is a very important topic where we'll be learning the various antibiotics. So let's start with the cell wall. Now to learn this mechanism of action, what we are going to do is we are going to have a look at this particular diagram. Now in a cell, we have a cell wall and cell membrane and inside we can see that how the different antibiotics are acting on the protein synthesis on the various steps. This diagram will help you to understand and learn all the antibiotics in one go. Okay, so the outside of the cell is a cell wall. So if you see the cell wall inhibiting antibiotics are penicillins. So on the left side, you can say they are beta lactam. So the beta lactam antibiotics are basically acting on the cell wall. So they can be penicillin, cephalosporin, carbapenems and monobactams, right? So we can say the specific examples can be penicillin on the right side, penicillin, cephalosporin, cycloserin. Now cycloserin is an important drug which is used in uh, tuberculosis, especially the drug resistant tuberculosis. Then we have the drug vancomycin. Now if you no, or if you remember, vancomycin is a drug of choice at various places. One of the places is MRSA. MRSA is the methicillin resistant staph aureus. So MRSA is the staph aureus which is resistant by methicillin. Methicillin was one of the penicillin antibiotics which was penicillinase resistant. So just to give you a nutshell or an overview of penicillins, the penicillins can be broken by various enzymes which are secreted by bacteria, which can be penicillinase or beta lactamase. Now, they developed some new antibiotics, for example, methicillin, which were resistant to penicillinase. Now, what happened over the time, the, uh, the bacteria started resistance against methicillin as well. They were known as MRSA. So for those and uh, bacteria, the drug of choice was vancomycin. And you will see that even vancomycin developed resistance. And finally, they have to evolve three other antibiotics out of which one will see just in a few seconds. Okay. So without getting confused, let's see the cell wall synthesis antibiotics are penicillin, cephalosporin, cycloserin, vancomycin and bacitracin. Now, always remember bacitracin is a very important antibiotic because it is used in polysporin. Polysporin is the most commonly used drug here and it, the polysporin is composed of bacitracin and polymyxin B, right? So on when, when you will see the uh, antibiotics acting on the cell membrane, we'll see that polymyxins are acting on cell membrane. So on the cell wall, we have mainly beta lactam antibiotics. Penicillin, cephalosporin, carbapenems, monobactams. Just to specify, we can say penicillin, cephalosporin, cycloserin, vancomycin, and bacitracin. Now, next comes the cell membrane. Now, always remember for the cell membrane, we have poly ones like polypeptides and polyenes. In the polypeptides, we have already seen polymyxin, which was there in polysporin, polystein, bacitracin. Right, so bacitracin is actually acting both ways, like cell wall and cell membrane. And in the polyenes, we have empotericin B, nystatin, and harmycin. Now, empotericin B and nystatin, <coughs> sorry, are antifungal medications. Right, so uh, we can say that all the poly ones are acting on cell membrane. Now, if you go inside the protein synthesis, now if you remember, the ribosomes are divided into 30S subunit and 50S subunit. Antibiotics which are acting on 30S subunits are tetracycline and aminoglycosides. So we can remember the mnemonic by B U Y by at 30 and cell or S E double L, you can say at 50. So by at 30 and sell at 50, 50. So 30 subunits we have at 80 means aminoglycosides and tetracycline. Now 50 S ones are a bit tricky, right? Now if you if you see the 50 S subunit is big, so you can say macrolides, the big ones acting, right? And then we read cell. 
So for the cell, always remember that it can be se double l. So we can say streptogrymins and linozolid. There's only one L. And there are two Cs, clindamycin and chloramphenicol, right? Clindamycin and chloramphenicol. Now, the, the antibiotics acting on prones, protein synthesis, if you see on the right, are tetracyclines, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, clindamycin, and linozolate. Out of all these, only the tetracycline is acting on 30S ribosomes. Rest all are acting on 50S ribosomes. Okay. Now, if we see the DNA function or the DNA synthesis. So if you see the DNA gyrase, quinolones or fluoroquinolones are the antibiotics which are acting on DNA gyrase. Then RNA polymerase or you can say DNA function, we have the rifampin, right? So if you see the drugs acting on DNA gyrase are fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin. Uh, DNA function is rifampin and then DNA synthesis is acyclovir. Acyclovir is a very common antiviral drug which is used in chickenpox. So I think uh, a lot of people, right, uh, they get chickenpox once in a lifetime. A lot of people, even I got it once um, in my lifetime and the most commonly used drug is acyclovir. Acyclovir is a very popular drug which almost everybody knows, right? And the second one is zidovudine. Then there are some inter intermediary mechanism drugs. So here you can see on the left trigram, we have, just a second. We have, let me just move the screen. Okay, so we have the drugs acting on the folate synthesis, which can be sulfonamides and trimethoprim, right? So they are derived from PABA. So in the synthesis of folate, we can see there are two drugs which are acting here, sulfonamides and trimethoprim, right? So we can say that almost with this one diagram, we can learn all the antibiotics with their mechanism of action. Now, let me go for a review for you all so that you remember in a nutshell. So in a nutshell, let's start with the outside, the cell wall. So cell wall are beta lactam antibiotics, mainly penicillin, cephalosporin, cycloserin, uh, vancomycin and bacitracin. Vancomycin was methicillin resistant staph aureus antibiotic, cycloserin was tubercular drug and bacitracin was used in polysporin, right? So the cell walls are beta lactam. Then we have vancomycin, cycloserin, acetracin. Then we have the cell membrane. Cell membrane are polypoly. -poly. So polypeptide and polyene. Polypeptide, we have polymyxin, which was a part of polysporin. And the polyenes, we have antifungals, like amphotericin B uh, and nystatin. Then we have the major ones with the protein synthesis. Always remember, by at 30, cell at 50. So by at 30 means aminoglycoside and tetracycline for 30S ribosome. And for 50S, it is bigger, macrolide, then cell. So you can say streptogrymins, linozolate, and 2C, CC, right? Clindamycin and chloramphenicol. Then some antibiotics acting on the DNA function, which can be the DNA gyrase, that fluoroquinolones, RNA polymerase or DNA function, rifampin. And then we have the DNA synthesis, acyclovir and zidovidine acyclovir and zidovirine. Then drugs acting on folate synthesis are sulfonamides and trimethoprim. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.